Okay, how you doing? Um, in another video, we dealt with 8-bit sign 2's complement numbers and how you uh, take decimal values and represent them and how you go the opposite way. If I tell you a number is an 8-bit sign uh, 2's complement number, how you can figure out what decimal number it represents. I promised in that video that I would show you why this works and that's what we're going to do here. And then we're going to show you uh, some examples for why it's used all the time too. So let's make a chart. Um, if, if we have eight bits, and, and I'm going to draw a line uh, in the center here, and hopefully we have enough room to do all this. Wish I could draw a straight line, but I'm getting better with this tablet. Um, so these are going to be the positive numbers up here, and these are going to be the negative numbers down here. Remember, this most significant bit of our 8-bit number is going to be a 0 here and it's going to be a 1 here, right? So, um, I probably got a little ambitious with my line here. Let me erase that a little bit so it looks better and actually makes it a little straighter too. Isn't that cool? Um, this is 0. And I know math people don't like to call zero positive or negative, but um, for here that works to call it positive. And if I just go in counting sequence, this sign bit's always going to be zero. This is the magnitude, right? So if I just keep on writing numbers in counting sequence here, this is going to be plus one. And when I add next thing, it's going to be plus two, right? Sign bit we always always has to be zero. It's on the positive side, and the next value in counting sequence uh, got a little carried away there the next value in counting sequence is 2 and um, if you follow this system pretty easily I can go the whole way up to uh, 1 1 1 1 1 1 1 now um, what is that in, in binary? If this was just a binary number, all these added together uh, would be what? One less than this if, if this wasn't a sign bit. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So 1 less than that is positive 127, and that's what that's representing. Notice if I go one more in counting sequence, um, it's going to push over into the sign bit, and we, we can't do that because you can't add 1 to 127 and get a negative number. That just doesn't make sense. Um, so I always tell students the earth, the earth is flat. When you're going in this direction, in the positive direction, that's a maximum number uh, that you can represent. If you want to represent higher numbers, you have to use a 16-bit sign twos complement, for example. And most people are okay with that. That, that works pretty well. Uh, they understand it, and if they say the Earth is flat, you fall off the end of the Earth here. So you can't go from a high negative number to, or a high positive number to a negative number. So let's go down here. This is the one that people have a hard time with. Remember, this is two's complement representation. So this is the value that represents negative one, and the other video showed you that. And what we're going to do here, um, the sign bit's always 1, right? Because we're in the negative direction. And we're going to have more negative numbers as we go down here. And what we're really doing is subtracting 1 instead of adding 1. So that's the value that represents negative 2. And this is the value that represents negative 3, right? So um, we have one zero one zero um so we subtract one from that again you know if i if i borrowed a one here and this is one so this is going to have to be a one and this is going to be a zero right let me get that out of the way um and you have to get a little bit better with your subtracting until it's there but it's gone through that counting sequence in reverse order and this will go the whole way down to one zero 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 and if I followed that whole way through um, that actually is representing minus 128 now it looks to me like uh, students always ask me this I can go from minus 1 to minus 128 it looks like it goes one more in this direction uh, but remember this starts at 1 and goes to 128 this starts at 0 and goes to 127 that's the same number of positions in both directions 
if you want to represent a negative and a positive number in a two's complement, assigned two's complement system uh, that's larger than these values, you have to use more bits. And uh, microprocessors and microcontrollers are made 18, 16 bit, uh, 32 bit. So you usually jump from an 8 bit sign two's complement to a 16 bit sign two's complement. That's how you uh, deal with larger numbers. Um, so it's nice and convenient. Nothing is repeated. Um, this system is, is really cool because there is a ones, 8 bit sign ones complement, uh, but it has a little bit of a quirk and no one uses it. So this is how computers always represent um, these values. So let's take an example uh, to show you why they came up with this system and do it. Let me erase what we have here. Okay, if I push a little harder, I can erase a bigger part. That's a little bit nicer. And let's say um, that we want to add two um, decimal numbers. Let's add positive 15 and positive 3. And that should come up with positive 18, right? And we don't usually put the positive in front of there. But what we're going to do is write these in 8-bit sign 2's complement form. So um, the sign bit and then the other seven bits of that value and then the sign bit here and the other seven bits of that value and what I'm gonna do is add these two numbers and make sure they come out to the right value so we know both these are gonna be a zero and what one two four eight sixteen and that's good enough right so fifteen is one 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 and three zeros and three is one one and a bunch of zeros and when i add those two together as eight bit sine two's complement numbers i add those two together one plus one is zero carry the one one plus one plus one is one carry the one there's a zero carry the one there's a zero carry the one um, the one to be my safety net here to tell me if i'm thinking and doing the wrong thing uh, but let's see if that works so this is an answer and this answer is an 8-bit sign 2's complement number so the first thing I know and my answer is I got a positive value well that's a good sign and now I have to see if the magnitude in here represents 18 and we know that's binary just straight binary there's no 2's complement those would be negative numbers right so 1 2 4 8 16. So 16 plus 2 is equal to 18. Yahoo! Uh, we got the right answer. So um, I'm not going to have time to show you all the examples here, but I'm going to tell you as long as you do operations that don't have an answer that's above positive 127 and then below negative 128, uh, no matter what you put here, it's going to always work. So um, let's do negative 2 plus negative 3, right? Notice how uh, I, I probably could say negative 2 minus 3, but microcontrollers don't do negative. So this 8-bit sign 2's complement is why they, they don't have to do subtraction. We can represent the negative numbers and just add them, and we're going to get the right value. So so this is gonna this is gonna take two steps, but let's put our two values here, and then we'll do an addition and we'll see if they work. So here we go, are laying out our templates, um, so we get those values in the right place, right? So negative two. Well, let's go up here and see if we can do that. The sign bit is a one, and two. That would be two, right? But we know when we're representing a negative number, we have to take the two's complement of this magnitude when we store it. So up to my hands covering up to here, right? And that means this changes, this changes, this changes, this changes, this changes, and these two stay the same. 
and then just bring your sign bit down. So this is the 8-bit sign 2's complement number that represents negative 2. By the way, if you don't know that this answer is negative 5, I'm going to have a hard time helping you out here. So let's put negative 3 in here. Once again, here's our sign bit. That's a 1, right? And 3. Um, just for the first step, right? We got to put a 3 in there in its binary form. And then we got to take the 2's complement of this, right? Bring the sign bit down up to and including the first one. That's that one. This is a one, 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 zero, one. And this is negative three. And boy, I hope I do this right, because if I don't get the right answer, I'm going to look really crazy, right? Um, now I do an addition. Just add them like they're binary numbers. One, one, zero, carry the one. Three ones is one, carry the one. Three ones is one, carry the one. Same thing here. Same thing here, same thing here, right? One, and then there's a carry. I'm going to write this over here and do it. Um, actually, um, I'm probably going to ignore this, but I'll write the carry there and let's see. So let's take a look at this. This is representing the result, and this should represent negative 5. So this is negative. That part of it we got, right? And since this is... A negative number this is in two's complement form and I got to take two's complement to get it out of there so I cover this up right and then I do what change all these that aren't covered up to the opposite and this one stays the same and check that out this is binary for five and it represents negative five and this system works uh, I'm not gonna sit here and show you all the examples you can work them yourself you can put all the numbers in there that you want. Uh, a positive number and a negative number. A negative number and a positive number. And you know if a negative number um, is added to, if it's more negative and it's added to a positive number, you're going to get a negative result. It'll work as long as you don't go over minus 128 and plus 127. Whoever designed the system, they closed all the holes. It works for everything possible. So... This is why 8-bit sign 2's complement is the only system used for storing negative values in a computer system. Um, and this is how it's used. This is why it's used. You just have to be able to think this through to do it. Um, yes, it's confusing for people. And uh, you need to practice it a little bit. Come back and watch this video as much many times as you can or ask us questions but practice a lot of problems to make sure you get it done and practice till you can't get it wrong and we'll see you in the future thank you